Well, hello guys and girls out there, wherever you are. Welcome to another totally random video. And yes, today's video is finally mini disc related again. Yeah. So uh, in today's video, I want to show you the new mini disc recorder that I just purchased. It is the Sony MZ R3. And apparently, I managed to get one with the original package with the original box but you know it's something that I don't really care that much about so the device is always more important to me than the package but yeah this is what the package looks like so uh, yeah let's take a look at the player and talk a little bit about it and get into it so, and here we got this little player or recorder. It's a really nice mini disc recorder. And I do have to say it is a lot shorter. I mean, if you look at the pictures, it looks a lot wider than it really is. And I really like the look of it. I like the design, especially with the display sitting right here and the buttons right here so it looks a little bit like an like a little answering machine and it also comes with uh, this back which is quite big but you can also attach a little attachment right here for a rechargeable battery so um, that's why it needs to be a little bit bigger it also comes with a remote control So here we have play and the play button is apparently also a skip back and forward then stop, pause right here we have uh, the volume control up and down track mark and right here we have AVLS on and off and hold and of course a clip for your belt the only thing that I don't like about this remote is the fact that it looks like you can't unplug the headphones, which is kind of a weird thing. It also says mini disc right here on this head uh, on this side of the headphones, and on this side it only says Sony. So yeah, uh, let's take a closer look at this device. Wait, what? A closer look? Yeah, but I have to go a little bit away with the camera so that I can show you all the different sides. So as you can tell, it is actually a really thick uh, mini disc recorder. I mean, compared to the uh, R55, it is quite thick. Here we have the mini disc for comparison. Yeah. And that's exactly what I like. I like bulky devices because I don't want to use it as a mini disc Walkman, but we'll get to that later. So here we have the opening mechanism. And I do have to say it feels really nice and solid and well made. Here we have the rack switch and a little light that blinks or glows constantly depending on what you do little switch for hold on this side we have volume control microphone input with plug-in power headphone and remote connection right here on this side we have the line out which apparently is only analog it's not digital and we have a line in which is optical and it's both digital and analog. Then here we have uh, the bass boost, normal, mid and maximum. And it sounds really good. That's what I like about the old mini disc Walkmans. They have a really strong and extremely warm bass. I mean, the digital bass of, for example, the R55 also sounds really good. and it continues to sound good almost no matter how loud the volume is 
but um, not the rack volume, but the volume when you listen to it. It is a little problem when it comes to the older devices, so the louder the music, the lower the bass, but it still sounds extremely warm and very pleasant. And here we also have um, the adapter, the power adapter, and here we can attach like this little rechargeable battery, which is kind of similar to uh, this battery compartment right here, only smaller. Yeah, and on the bottom we have the little button right here for clock set. So it has an internal clock, so you have some kind of a timestamp on your recording if you record something with this recorder. And we also have battery compartment. Yeah, so let's take a closer look now. I can do it just like that. So, yeah, what have we got here? Well, enter, title, track mark, insert, which is very important on those portables, the erase button, I've never seen that, stop, pause, play, forward, backward, display, mode. Pretty self-explanatory, but I still want to show you how everything works. And you can already see the display is actually really slow. I mean, look at this. Why did, why did, why have they decided to first have this huge gap and then show me disc to tell me that now comes the title of the disc? It's um, yeah, kind of pointless, but whatever. So yeah. What can we do? Well, we have a lot of different functions right here, as you probably already guessed. So if we wanna title the track, we just push title, and then we can title the track name. We can use this jog wheel to scroll through the various different characters. So, wait a second, how can I... Is it display or mode? No. What exactly do I have to push so that I get to the small characters? This is the next character. Ah, play. You have to push play to get to the small. Aha. So this is how you title the tracks. If you want to title the disc, of course, all you have to do is push stop and then push title. So now you can enter the disc name, but I don't want to do that right now. Um, if I want to set a track mark, you just push track mark. So mark on. If you want to move a track, you have to press and hold play and then push title and enter. And now you can use this wheel to decide where you want to move the track and push enter and it moved the track. If you want to erase a track mark, you just push pause and back and then track mark, mark off. This means that it combined two tracks right now. So end search is, like I said, very important on those devices because if you don't use end search, you start recording where you are or you start to record at the position where you are. So this could cause, you know, it could be possible that you record over something. It's kind of like a cassette, basically. So you have to push end search in order to jump to the end of the last recorded track. And then you can start recording. Erase, pretty self-explaining. Just push the erase button two times and then it erased. 
that track. Yeah, for some reason um, they say that this thing is also capable of automatically adjusting the rack volume no matter if you record from an analog or a digital source. But I don't know how good that really works, especially if it's uh, coming from an analog source. So if you want to uh, record something, let's go to the last track. You have to push and hold pause and you have to slide the uh, rack button or rack switch and you have to hold the rack switch for two seconds and this way it jumps to or it changes to uh, the manual recording. So like this and now you can use back and forward to adjust the rack volume while you are listening to the music and then you can see the level and see if the rack volume is okay or not. And you have to do it before you start recording because there is no way to adjust the rack volume while you are recording. So now let me show you something else. Something that some of you probably might, may have already noticed, but just in case you haven't, I just want to show it to you. So as you can tell, we have this little, it says level right here, and then it says 0%, 10%, and 100%. And you probably think that this might be like some kind of a VU meter or the volume, the rack volume or whatever, but that's not what it is. If I push play, level is actually this little thing right here on the side. So what is this line right here at the bottom? Well, apparently this is the position indicator. Yeah, it tells you at which point of the mini disc you are. So right now it's flashing right here at the beginning because we are at the beginning of the disc. You can see that the disc has been recorded a little bit more than 50%. So we have a little bit less than 50% left to record something. So if I jump to the next track, which begins right here, then the third track right here. So I don't know, it is kind of pointless to be honest. So if I want to record something, oh wait, it's protected. So if I want to record something right now, and search, rec pause, line in, Oh no, it doesn't. Or does it? I just start recording. No, it doesn't. Or maybe if I change display? No. For some reason, I thought that it would show me how much I have left to record on this mini disc, but apparently it doesn't. So I don't know, this position indicator is kind of pointless. Like you can see the elapsed time, but if we push display, we can see how much recording time we have actually left. So this is definitely way more accurate. And you know, it doesn't have a timestamp. That's why it shows me this stuff. So yeah, this is the MSET R3. Now you probably want to know why I decided to get this, this uh, recorder, even though I already have quite a lot of mini disc recorders. Well, the reason why I decided to get this recorder is because I wanted to have a small mini disc device to play my mini discs with, because I also want to prolong the life of my um, mini disc deck, and that's why I want to use it just as a recorder. And yeah, I want to have something small but at the same time old school and bulky and that's exactly what this thing is. 
And, you know, I had a couple of other players in the past. I had the uh, MZ1, which was perfect, but unfortunately the disc loading mechanism broke. Then I also had the MDS-101, which looked also very nice, almost like a small portable mini disc deck. It was just slightly bigger than the MZ-1, but unfortunately it was also slightly broken. Plus it wasn't capable of playing mono recorded discs. And yeah, then I also tried the MZR55 as well as the MZR37. But you know, handling especially the R55 was kind of complicated. And both devices had the same problem. They were just too loud, too noisy. So you could always hear that clickering, clicking sound, whatever of the mechanics inside uh, the Minidisc Walkman if you listen to a Minidisc. And it's a lot more annoying if you have uh, the Minidisc Walkman, if it's powered over uh, an AC adapter instead of batteries. So um, if you listen to some quiet or soothing music, it's, it could be very distracting and annoying. Then I also tried the uh, MZ E20, which is this one right here. It feels a little bit cheap because it's all made out of plastic, but I love the window and it sounded really good even though it only has a headphone output instead of uh, a real proper line out. It worked good. It was also a lot more quiet than the R55, uh, than the uh, MZ R55 and the MZ R37, but you could still hear the mechanics every now and then. And the annoying part was also that the buttons and the display, they are both at the front. So um, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Then I also tried the uh, MZ NH600, which also only has a headphone output and it sounds terrible. I can't recommend the NH600. So that's why I got this thing. And I do have to say or mention a few things that I have to, well, I have to mention a few things. You know, there is an, another Minidisc Walkman which looks similar to this one. It's the MZR30. This is the R3 but there is also the R30 and the R30 is actually a little bit better. For example, the R30 has the digital automatic record start function. So it automatically starts recording as soon as the source starts playing the music. And with the R30, you also have the ability to use this jog wheel to scroll through the various different titles without stopping the music. So the current track continues to play while you can search for an, a new track, which is very nice and very convenient. Um, and then there is apparently also a difference when it comes to recording something in mono. You see, if you record something in mono with the R30, it takes the left and the right channel of the source and it combines them into one mono channel or one mono signal. But if you record something in mono with this one, it only takes the left channel and it completely ignores all the audio from the right channel, which um, yeah is kind of stupid. But you know, if you want to record something, you should probably avoid old mini disc devices like this anyway. I would always recommend that you only use mini disc recorders that have an ad track version of at least 4.0. Everything above is fine, everything below, um, well, could have some problems and doesn't really give you the sound quality that you might want. And last but not least, there is also another advantage if you listen to your mini discs over a mini disc Walkman instead of a mini disc deck, and it's the ability to always pick up where you left off. So if you listen to something, 
and you want to leave the house or something and you push stop you can always continue at the exact same position if you come back home all you have to do is push play and it continues where you left off well this is something that is impossible with a mini disc deck you always have to start at the beginning of the disc or you have to search for the track that you were listening to but you can never stop, uh, continue at the exact same position so yeah this is it this was my video about the uh, MZ R3 I hope you liked this video and yeah I hope I haven't forgot to mention anything by the way, it's really nice and quiet. I don't hear anything, so the mechanics are really nice. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next totally random video. Bye.